third lesson we'll demonstrate accessing the left and right channel peak values as a song plays to allow you to create real time 2 to beat visualizations. 2 to beat visualizations are what makes ActionScript 3 sound programming so exciting for me personally. So I'm going to show this feature before we learn to program control buttons, draggable sliders and such things. Okay, we're going to create a new ActionScript 3 file. I'm going to turn the stage black. Now this time I'm going to draw out a rectangle primitive and turn my sound programming where all my sound programming code is into a nested movie clip. So there's my little rectangle. I'm going to right click it, convert to symbol, just call it audio. Okay, and you don't have to give it an instance name. We just want to nest the code. That way if you have a full flash website or something, you have button menus and a lot of different things going on in your site, you might want to get your sound programming into its own little movie clip so it's independent and it can be more easily managed that way. Moved around using other different files and things like that. So now let's double click inside of it and we'll resume just like we were doing before by putting code in this timeline now. And this rectangle doesn't even have to be a visible thing so I'm going to remove the stroke and I'm going to change the alpha on that on the fill color just to so I just notice it's there a little bit but you could actually totally remove it completely remove it or bring the alpha all the way down on it so you don't see it so let's rename this layer base make a new layer I'm gonna call this stuff make another layer and call this AS3 short for action script 3 and that's where we'll put the code on that layer now on the stuff layer I'm gonna grab the rectangle primitive again I'm going to draw out a very small rectangle and I'm just going to make it a height of 1, very small. I'm going to change my color on that, bring the alpha all the way up. So there it is. I'm going to right click that now. I'm going to convert that to symbol, movie clip, it doesn't matter what the name is, but the registration is important. You want to make it registration bottom, center. That way, when it animates upwards, it has the correct registration so things don't warp out on you. Okay. Now let's give that an instance name of left bar. Let's press Control C, highlight it, press Control C, Control Shift V, make it another copy of it. Call that one in the instance name right bar. So these are going to be like our little equalizer bars. You can grab multiple things together by holding Shift as you select them. So I'm going to move it over a little bit, move them down. Okay, right there is good. Now you're going to take out two dynamic text fields. So let's grab the text tool and make sure it says dynamic text over here and place it. Let's give it an instance name, right peak underscore txt. All right, so I've got that one sitting right under the right equalizer bar. Press control C, control shift V. Make another copy of that and drag it over to fit under the left bar. Make sure you change that instance name on that text field to left peak underscore txt. Let's put one more dynamic text field. Control C, Control V, and this one put it right about there. Let's get that an instance name of status. And all of these things we're placing on stage just let us know and give us visual indications of the left and right peaks in the sound. It'll show you how to access the left and right peak in such a way that you can apply it to any animations or any graphics that you have. For instance, I'm going to be applying it to these little equalizer bar things I made there. And it's just a rectangle now, but it's going to come to life. Okay, I'm going to also add a couple of static text fields. This one say left peak with a little arrow. I'm going to change that from dynamic to static because I don't need that to be dynamic. And I'm going to take that, press control C, control shift V. Now we're ready to apply the code. So let's go to the action script 3 layer, highlight it, press F9, open the actions panel. We're going to start off with the code that we used in the very last lesson, lesson number 2, where we brought in an external MP3 and we command it to play. I'm going to have this file communicate to folders on my computer. I have to make sure I save this. So file, save as, let's name it sound example 2. 
in that same folder that we had before with the mp3 files in it. So there you can see we're going into that mp3 files folder and we're accessing this mp3. So if we press control enter we'll see the song plays but we have no amplitude visualizations set up just yet through the code. So now that you have the sound object set up and you've set up the new URL request, that means this song is going to stream if it's online. If you were to put this application online, this MP3 will stream in, meaning that it won't the file won't have to load in the whole entire MP3. It will just load as much of it as it needs to load to get it started playing and then it'll stream the rest in to the user. When you're viewing this on your system, things will play right away. But you have to keep in mind that when this is online, MP3s have to stream in. But if you have things like button sounds and regular little beeps and blips like that for user interface type stuff, you can load that straight into your flash file and not worry about anything. But you really don't want to load MP3 files, full songs and stuff, into your library because that will dramatically raise the size of your FLA and your SWF file. So it will take longer for your flash file to load initially. But if you use this method where you're streaming MP3 in, your flash file will load like lightning, and then the streaming of the MP3 will happen secondary. So in order to more easily access the channel's left and right peak, the sound channel's left and right peak, we have to create a new sound channel. So let's comment out this sound.play. And right under that, let's type in var, let's just name it channel, colon, sound channel, semicolon. Then all you have to do is say channel equals snd sound.play, just like you had before, but now you're playing it through the channel. See? Still plays and everything. Now the reason why we set it up into a channel like that is because having the sound channel gives us the ability to access certain things that we need to access in order to more easily give a visual representation of the sound that's playing. We'll have to also use the sound channel when it comes to other controls that we create down the line for controlling the sound. So that's how you set up your sound channel to go along with your sound object. And remember, the sound channel just gives you extra things to access and play with regarding the sound that's loaded in. All right, so now that our song is playing at this point, we have a status text field here. So we're going to make it render something in the code. So let's type in status underscore txt dot text is equal to the song is now playing so when you press control enter that gives you a visual representation that the song is now playing okay now let's go down a couple of lines and we're going to add an event listener which is an enter frame event and what an enter frame event is is something that will allow a programmer to run a process many many times per second and it's not sound programming specific. It can be used in animations or anything that you want to use it for in Flash. But it just allows you to do something over and over and over again very quickly. You can see our file has one frame. That means if our file is set up to be 24 frames per second, this is going to fire off 24 times per second. If I had two frames here, it would fire off 12 times per second. If I had three, it would fire off eight times per second. But since I only have one frame, this is going to be access this enter frame event is going to run 24 times per second and that is what we need to animate these bars the way we need to animate them according to the exact sound at that millisecond the exact right and left peak alright so let's go down one more line and let's put the function that that listener is tied to this is the function that this listener is going to fire off See, function on enter frame. You can name that whatever you want. But in the flash help file, that's what they commonly name this. So I'm just going to leave it named on enter frame. That's the function name. Here's its listener. And remember, it's going to fire off 24 times per second. Now, the first line is simply putting in this left peak text, putting in a value there. So you say left peak underscore txt dot text is equal to. And you put this this empty value between double quotes just so it becomes a string and I don't get any error. But basically you don't even need these. You can comment those out and your left and right bar are still going to animate with these two lines. But I'm going to leave those in because I want to visually see the number. 
So what we've done is we're using the channel's left peak and the channel's right peak to create a number from 1 to 100 that's going to represent that peak. And the way we do that is we take the channel's left peak and the right peak, which are decimal numbers by default, and we have to math.round them so when you round the number it becomes a whole number and then you times that whole number by 100 it's very simple so that's all we're doing and I think the best way to do it is to leave to come away from this equation with a number that's between 0 and 100 that will give you a, a pretty true representation of the left and the right peaks so you just basically you use that same math here when you're animating the height property of the left and right bar. So you're going to use the sound channels left and right peaks and you round them and you times them by 100 to make a number that's between 0 and 100 and you use those numbers. And they're always going to be changing. Those numbers are always going to be changing very quickly. You use those numbers to animate the bars. So let's see if this works. Okay. So you can see we have our left and right peak text showing us the numbers. And the bars will rise and fall. Exactly according to the left and right amplitude. Okay, so you see this enter frame event? Let's just give ourselves a comment. Enter frame event. So we're going to use this function that fires off many times per second to do some other things regarding sound control. So not only can you access the right and left peaks for creating real-time visualizations like that, we're going to use this function for other things as well. So this is a very handy thing to know how to do right off the bat. Now another handy thing to know how to do is set up an on playback complete function. Now what that is, is you're adding an event listener to the sound channel. That event listener is the sound complete event. So the sound channel has an event listener placed on it for sound complete. So whenever the sound is complete, that means the song finishes playing, this on playback complete function is going to fire off. Now here you just place that function in. Function on playback complete will remove the event listener which is the enter frame event because you don't want this enter frame event to keep firing off even if there's no song playing because there's no need for it to. So you can remove that event listener and you update your status text field to say the song is over. And we're also going to add some functionality to that function as well later on because on an on playback complete event what you can do is say you know you listen for when one song is finished and maybe there's a scenario where you want to start a next song up automatically that's where the on playback complete event comes in very handy because as one song finishes another song can start or as a song finishes you can make some other movie clip play in your files send them to another section of your flash file whatever you want to do anything that you can do through code okay so here's the really important thing to keep in mind this text adding this to the text these aren't even important at all. So you can just kind of disregard those. These two lines where we're manipulating these two bars, you have to understand that you can manipulate any properties of any objects that you have on stage. Maybe you want to manipulate the brightness or the alpha or the position, the X position or the Y position rather than the height or width of some object. You know, let's get our text back in there so we see those. So that's how you can set up listening for your right peak and left peak values to animate things on stage. And also add a couple of very needed useful functions for sound programming in ActionScript 3. And there's a lot more to it. We've only scratched the surface. Okay, so that completes this lesson on just the very basics of accessing the values you need to create real to-the-beat visualizations.
And before we part, I want to show you a couple of live online examples of how I've applied this. You can see that right channel pumping out. Left channel is pretty quiet. So if you get creative, you can do things like animate some cool speakers that you design in Flash. See, I got some speakers with some shine on them. They're just pumping along like a boombox. So that's one example. And here is another equalizer. Not believe your eyes. If that's a really nice equalizer. And I set it up and I set it up to have green to yellow to red at the highest level and I'm using masks and for that one I'm using masks to achieve that I think later on in the video textbook I'm really gonna get into the visuals creating cool visualizations more so than just two bars going up and down like I showed you in the in the tutorial. There's a lot more you can do if you get creative. And here's Web Intersect. Because you can see. America, fuck yeah, I even have the, I have the logo up in the equalizer. Branded it. And this one has speakers and equalizer. America, yeah. You can just manipulate the height and width of a round object and it'll pump like that speaker. You see how in the code we're manipulating the the height only of those bars? Let's say you had a round object there with a center registration set on that movie clip. All you have to do is manipulate the height and the width together and it'll pump like a speaker. Okay, so that's that and we'll see you in section 4 of the sound programming video textbook for ActionScript 3 in Flash.